This video has links to sources in the description. Don't forget to check it out. Ken Shoulders was an experimental physicist that worked at SRI and pioneered modern-day microelectronics. He also pioneered early drone technology. He worked with Hal Putthoff in trying to understand EVOs, which he figured out how to control and measure. EVOs stands for exotic vacuum objects. They can also be called condensed charge clusters. They are described as being extremely tightly packed electrons to the point of resembling physical matter, but in plasma form. They also are described as having the ability to create electric double layers with protons attached to the negatively charged cluster. Such extreme densities are often thought to be in violation of physics, however, Richard Feynman has expressed under certain circumstances such arrangements are possible and evidence of this bizarre phenomena has been collected by Ken Shoulders. An enormous amount of Ken's well-documented work is archived in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at the Science History Institute. So, I paid a visit and started taking pictures of what I found. There was too much for me to document it all and the amount I did manage to walk away with in no way can be covered in a single post. This is a preliminary dissemination of the information I found in the archives, much of which is not on the internet, and related information I've found elsewhere. Ken's work could be studied for years if not decades and he documented a lot of it as well as much of his correspondences, even personal notes about people he met. There are letters between him and Putthoff at the archives, but unfortunately I somehow missed them and will have to go back. This research will give a lot of insight and lead to many rabbit holes, but my primary focus is his discoveries related to EVOs, which are a very real phenomena. Here is a quick summation of what will be covered in this video. Ken Shoulders is basically like the Nikola Tesla of our era and discovered how to make a new kind of plasma that most physicists would claim violates the laws of physics, but it's very real and in fact does not. Richard Feynman didn't believe him at first then apologized in a letter. Additionally, it can be explained and replicated. It also explains many reports of cold fusion, and Ken documented it all with a few others while he tried in earnest to patent and commercialize the technology. It's also covered in one of the AWSAP defense intelligence reports as ideal for further research. Ken became interested in EVOs after realizing others had documented their existence in the literature, but never bothered to fully investigate them as he details in his self-published book EV, A Tale of Discovery. He realizes the work of Winston Bostick as the best source of investigation into a potentially new discovery early in his research. Bostick was a plasma physicist that discovered plasmoids, plasma focus, and plasma vortex phenomena. Ken went on to immerse himself in investigating what he coined EVs or EVOs. He published a number of patents related to them including a patent to generate energy from them in 1992. One of the recently published DIRDs, Concepts for Extracting Energy from the Quantum Vacuum, covers EVOs and concludes that topic is ideal to pursue for further research. Ken shared his discovery with Richard Feynman who initially refused to believe him, but I found a letter from Feynman to Shoulders in which he apologizes and admits that it's real. These are pictures of the documents archived in the museum of his work. I will share some brief notes that corroborate his work in microelectronics and drones to establish his credibility as a physicist. I will share as much as I can about his work with EVOs, but it's difficult to cover it all. I will also share some personal notes that I found interesting and could possibly be used by investigative sleuths to learn more. Here are some personal notes dated from 1956-57 about microelectronics. Back then the term didn't even exist. I work in this field and can tell you he is describing things that didn't commercially exist for another 20 years. Below are some notes describing building logic gates using field emitters and microtransistors, ion gauges, clean room design, physical vapor deposition, micro patterning, sputtering, and lift off techniques known to those skilled in the art of microelectronics fabrication. In 1970, he formed the drone company Vertitech. He planned to make a commercially available toy that operated via ultrasonic frequency to avoid collisions powered by a free piston engine. There's a lot of documents on this endeavor, but I'll just share a few for now. 
He has a unique approach to his drones in that they operate with a single wing design as you can see in his patent. I've found correspondences between Ken and SRI in the military discussing his drone technology as apparently it was first conceived while still employed by SRI. Ken appeared to have some disputes over who owned the technology and was more interested in making a toy out of it. If I recall correctly, he has long pages of notes about discussing opportunities with KB Toys and Mattel, but I'm pressed to find them among the 250 plus pictures at the moment. It appeared to me that he was given permission to make toys, but that SRI and the military wanted to retain rights to any military applications. If anybody requests I find these I'll dig them up. I found some interesting note cards from 1972 that mention Pete Peterson, J.G. Gallimor, Airing Research Institute, a missing bismuth wound dielectric motor, White Star Ranch and anti-gravity. He mentions some of these names again as well as psychic stuff, and accuses one of them of being a complete squirrel. Ken appears to have been researching gravity around this time and notes a new theory by Dr. Jakob Mandelker. Roger Billings is a pioneer of hydrogen energy technology. Jim Hollenhurst, who was at Stanford at the time and is big in technology today. I tried looking up Pete Peterson and found an interview with David Wilcox season 4 episode 2 where he discusses meeting Ken in the 70s and seeing his lab. He claims Ken showed him working prototypes of the drone and that it was small enough to fit in your hand with 17 horsepower and powered by isobutene. He also says Ken was at least 50 to 200 years ahead of everyone else. I do take this guy with a grain of salt, however, because he claims a lot of wild things and it's basically hearsay. Pete covers psychotronics pretty heavily in this series which Lou Elizondo recently confirmed as a real field. A link of Lou confirming Russians experimented with psychotronic weapons is in the description. Airing Research Institute is a non-profit formed around that time with known ties to top secret programs according to Wiki. Dr. Jakob Mandelker's 1951 book on gravity is hard to find but a link to it and more information is found in the description. There's a lot to take in and I'm honestly not sure where to start. I linked Ken's book to EVs, but even that is overwhelming. He has numerous patents related to them, but patents are also very difficult to make sense of. The good news is that Ken provided sources to try to explain his discoveries using what he called, mainstream, terms. I also was able to find his old website where he shares a lot of information. It appears Ken wanted to get this information out. I also found some correspondences and work of others that helps put things into perspective. This all culminates in a patent that was written, but appears to have been rejected by the patent office using EVOs for cold fusion. Before you write off EVOs and cold fusion I want to reiterate that EVOs are real and very well documented. Ken has slide after slide of SEM and other characterization analysis. EVs or EVOs can also go by the name of high energy charge clusters or a whole host of other terms. It turns out that many people have discovered and documented them and used different terminology because it's not well published information. Before I get into sharing Ken's work I want to point out that Ross Kalthart, famed journalist and author of In Plain Sight, in his interview on theories of everything mentions cold fusion in the Sapphire project using EVOs, he specifically uses the term EVO. I've also included a timestamp link to this discussion in the description. Sapphire has been looked at by Putthoff and Eric Davis as well as Los Alamos and a few other notable names. Cuthart says he's taking the project seriously and notes that academic dismissiveness in cold fusion research is quote, not entirely legitimate. It's also worth noting Sapphire is working off of the Electric Universe theory of Bostic, the discoverer of plasma phenomena that inspired Ken Shoulders. What many people don't seem to realize is that Sapphire isn't the first project to get these kinds of repeatable results. Ken's work was repeatable and thanks to the work of others is now well described as you will see. One project Ross mentions is the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Ross actually interviews Bob Greenier of this project. And Bob Greenier does a great presentation to APEC on EVOs. They are linked in the description.
If you read my comment on the post below you can see how EVOs may potentially be related to the Pays effect, assuming it's real, because they do in fact create the energy density he claims is necessary. In this paper it's shown that EVOs can reach 10 to the power of 6 Tesla and 10 to the power of 19 J per cubic meter using an input of 2.5 kV. It stands to reason that if it scales and I'm not fudging the math, an input that approaches 1 MV should also approach the values pays as claiming will bridge the quantum vacuum with general relativity. Look around page 11 equation 40. On to the primary research. I found a paper by Shoulders titled, Observations on the Role of Charge Clusters in Nuclear Cluster Reactions. Here is a letter from Hal Fox describing intent to patent an EVO apparatus to facilitate nuclear reactions with Ken. Here is first page draft of said patent from 1996. Here's the first page of said patent with docket number. Any lawyers care to look it up for us? Here is the first page of a 1997 Nevada business plan with Larry Azure to remediate radioactive materials and obtain funding from the Department of Energy. It names Tom Shanks as funder of Ken's laboratory. Ken has an entire print out of the book Cold Fusion, the scientific fiasco of the century in his archives. There's an entire folder of information that lists Jupiter Technologies Incorporated, Ken's company, an energy products corporation, unknown entity. I managed to find Ken's old website on the Wayback Machine and it's full of more information. I found this because Ken had printouts from the website in his archives. It saves me a lot of work actually. Related information I found and bought a book that covers experiments in Kyiv, Ukraine done in the early 2000s that also claim to transmute elements and allow for nuclear remediation. The point being numerous people have been reporting transmutations and anomalous energy output since the famous Pons Fleischmann results of 1989. Shoulders, Adamenko and Sapphire are not the only people since then to report these kinds of results. Much like the stigma of UAP, UFOs keeps academia out of that subject, the same can be said for, cold fusion. This is just part one of my preliminary research into Ken's work and EVOs. It's so much I haven't had enough time to dive into everything I just shared deeply yet myself. It's like drinking out of a fire hose and I'm sharing this research with you all in real time. There's so much more to come. Make sure you check the links in the description and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel.